Welcome to season five of Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm Joshua Sharfstein, Vice Dean for Public Health Practice and Community Engagement, and a former health commissioner here in Baltimore, Maryland. Our goal with this podcast is to bring scientific evidence and experience to shed light on critical health issues. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Hi, I'm Lindsay Smith-Rogers, producer of Public Health on Call. On Saturday, May 21st, the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health is holding its spring graduation ceremonies. Today, Dr. Josh Sharfstein talks to one of the school's hundreds of proud graduates, a soon-to-be PhD in environmental health and engineering named Caitlin Series. They discuss her career prior to public health school, the diverse experiences she's had as a student, and her PhD dissertation. This major research project, supervised by Hopkins professor Ronnie Neff, focused on the challenges facing food workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's listen. Caitlin Series, or I should say the soon-to-be Dr. Series, thank you so much for joining me to tell me a little bit about your career at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Thank you for having me. So let's start in the before times, not just before COVID, but before you pursued public health training. What what were you up to? So my original professional background is in nursing, and I worked as a critical care nurse in surgical intensive care. Actually, in Baltimore City, I worked at Johns Hopkins Bayview, and there I got a really intense crash course in critical illness and supporting patients through critical illness and trauma. And I moved from there to serve in the United States Peace Corps. I was a community health empowerment volunteer in the Republic of Fiji for two years. And then I came back and that's when I started my journey at Johns Hopkins. So what led you to wake up one morning in Fiji and say, you know, I want to get a public health degree? So I think I started getting interested in public health as a nursing student and then definitely as a bedside critical care nurse, starting to think about how to keep people from ever needing critical care, focusing on prevention. And I think that thinking about prevention leads you to thinking about population level health. So I had sort of an inkling that that's what I wanted to do when I left for the Peace Corps. And when I returned, I thought I had some practical experience, but I needed to scaffold it with some theory and learn from some people who had been doing this for a long time, how to be an effective public health practitioner and researcher. Great. So the first public health program that you pursued was the master's in public health? That's correct. And uh, how did that go? It went great. I stayed for a second round. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I was in the occupational safety and health concentration in the master's public health program. And I met some really fantastic people and um, got into some some research for my capstone. I did um, qualitative interviews with Baltimore corner store owners about their occupational exposures and just kind of got, it fed my passion. And um, I wanted to learn more after the master's program. I wasn't, I wasn't done. So I kept going. So you leave Fiji after the Peace Corps, you come to the School of Public Health, you do an initial degree, get exposed to different classes and actual field work in occupational health. Why occupational health? Well, I started in the environmental health track after, like I said, when I was a bedside nurse, I just really noticed all these environmental health issues, especially workplace injuries. Because I was in trauma, I took care of people who got hurt at work. And so that was sort of at the top of mind as a really effective place to focus efforts for prevention. And I learned a little bit more about environmental health in Fiji, about food systems. I started to get interested in food security and how that impacts people. And um, so when I came back, that's where I decided to focus. But the master's in public health, like you said, exposed me to a wide variety of areas. That's just the place where I I found my home, but I definitely dabbled in different spots, policy and epidemiology and things like that. Got it. So then you decide to go on to a PhD. Did you do that right after the master's program? I knew I was interested in it after the master's program, but I didn't apply until the following year. And during that 
gap year, I worked on a Johns Hopkins study, the Philadelphia soda tax study, which was in Baltimore City. And I did data collection and I ended up a research coordinator for that project. And again, got exposed to a different kind of research, collaborative research, interdisciplinary approaches, and took that with me to the doctoral program. And what did the Philadelphia Soda Tax Study find? They found that, so my job was to go into corner stores and sort of look at what they had. And they were looking at whether sugar sweetened beverage tax would change consumption of sodas and things that we know that are not great for people's health. And Philadelphia had just started taxing sugar sweetened beverages and Baltimore did not. So I was part of the control data collection team. And they found that in Philadelphia, after the tax was implemented, people did consume fewer sugar sweetened beverages than in Baltimore, where the consumption stayed the same. Got it. So evidence that the tax did have the intended effect. That's right. So you go on to a PhD program. Uh, Tell me what that's been like. It's been really interesting. I was both connected with the Department of Environmental Health and Engineering Occupational Health Program. And I was a, for four years of my degree, I was a fellow at the center, the Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future. And really, it was a continuation of the master's degree in that I got such a wide exposure to all different ways of thinking about public health problems. But of course, it was more focused on developing research methods and techniques to measure and implement interventions. So as a CLF fellow, I looked at food waste in the food system, worker health in the food system, industrial farm animal production, alternative proteins, mostly food system focused research, but a lot of different angles on health through the food system. And that culminated in my dissertation research. Got it. Before we get to the dissertation research though, What are alternative proteins? Sure. So alternative proteins are things that are not um, industrial farmed animals to put meat or they're not meat, um, traditionally farmed meat animals that provide protein for for a nutritious diet. So like what's an example of an alternative protein? The ones that I was looking at were like shellfish aquaculture production. So shellfish is actually a really great alternative to land dwelling livestock. It usually benefits the water system that it's in. It creates um, working opportunities for coastal communities, and it's really low on the food chain, which means that it has less of an environmental impact, but it's a really high quality protein. So I was looking at the needs, the workforce needs that we would need to scale up production and how to keep workers safe as they produce the shellfish aquaculture. So I'm sure you experienced this, but just telling me, I, I appreciate how different the kinds of projects you've worked on are from a soda tax to coastal communities and aquaculture. Yeah, it was, it's was. it been a really excellent experience. And I, all of those things have really contributed to my views on how to tackle public health problems. So let's get to your dissertation research. So I guess at some point during your PhD, the pandemic happens. That's right. And for a lot of people that changes what they wind up studying. Did that happen to you? That did happen to me. I had happily defended a a proposal to look at shellfish aquaculture production for my dissertation. And then a couple of months later, actually, the pandemic hit. And unfortunately, the impact on the local aquaculture production industry of COVID-19 was really catastrophic. And so without wanting to burden people who are in that industry with a researcher or student coming to ask them questions. And because um, they were really focused on keeping their businesses afloat, I pivoted. I pivoted, um, but I stayed in the food worker safety and health space. So it was really great that my training prepared me really well to look at essential food workers exposures during COVID-19 as they were going to work to feed the nation. You know, what are they experiencing? So that's what I ended up focusing on. So what did you find? What, would the, what was the experience of food service workers during the pandemic? We looked at food workers across the food chain, and we found that a lot of food workers, despite going to work in their essential jobs, didn't feel very well protected, didn't maybe make enough money to be food secure themselves, and that these situations contributed to behaviors that we may not want to encourage, like going to work while they were sick, and exposing their coworkers and customers 
to COVID-19. has a lot of implications for policy. It does. Um, in thinking about where we want to focus our efforts, both now and during future crisis situations, we really need to support food system workers better than we did, I think, during the early COVID-19 pandemic, not only because they're worthy of support and protection, but also because if food system workers aren't able to do their jobs well and safely, the food system ceases functioning. So we need food system workers on many levels to be safe and healthy. So you defended your thesis, as they say. That's right. You are on track to graduate at the school's convocation coming up very shortly. What happens next? What kinds of issues are you interested in working on? I mean, you've looked at so many different issues related to occupational health, food, and the environment. Well, I definitely want to continue this line of research. I think that especially right now, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted occupational health issues and also created possibly political will to address some of the the low-hanging fruit. So I really would like to continue contributing research in that space. And I also think there are opportunities to follow the, like you said, follow the implications for increasing our capacity for sustainable food production and for enhancing health and equity in the food system overall. So if you work cut out for you, basically. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me and to tell our audience about just what amazing students we have here at the School of Public Health. You tap someone on the shoulder and you get an incredible story of contributions in so many different ways. So congratulations, Dr. Series. We will play this just a couple of days before that becomes official. Thank you so much. I really appreciate talking to you. Public Health On Call is produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Stephanie Desmond. Audio production by Niall Owen McCusker, Matthew Martin, Spencer Greer, and Holly Cardinal, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production support from Catherine Ricardo. Social media support from Grace Holes Fernandez. Thank you for listening. Thank you.